Greg and I purchased this property nearly a year ago. We both come from northern pastoral backgrounds, so farming's fairly new to us. Traditionally, we would have considered ourselves cattle producers, but the more time we spend down here, we can't have healthy cattle unless we have healthy pastures, and we can't have healthy pastures unless we've got healthy soils. So we really need to become soil farmers before we can improve our business. So I really need to know where to start, uh, what we've got to start with, and what is going to be best practice in producing those healthy soils. So I'm Fran Hoyle, I'm a Senior Research Scientist with the Department of Agriculture and Food, WA, and I'm interested in soil health and how soils function to support production systems. So healthy soils mean a lot of different things to different people, but essentially a healthy soil is one that effectively functions to support the production system that you're, you're working in. So um, a soil that provides the chemistry and the physical structure and the biological function that you need for grains or for cattle or for any type of production system. But essentially it's one that has no constraints. So if I was um, coming onto a new property, I guess I would want to know what types of soils are there. So soil sampling is probably the first step in terms of defining where your different soil types are and what their particular characteristics are. And then I'd be looking at a package of information that will provide me the most information on its its condition and its constraints. The important thing when you're soil sampling is to make sure that you capture the variation in your paddocks within your soil sampling strategy. So you may be sampling different soil types in different zones that you want to keep separately. You want to make sure that you capture zones of soil in terms of depths, so your surface soils as well as your subsoils. But really it's about knowing that you've captured the variation and you know where the problem soils are and what their problems are when you get the analyses back. So once you've got your soil samples, it, the next step is to send them to a reputable laboratory to have them assessed um, for their soil characteristics. So you would look at your chemistry of those soils, for example, making sure that you test for soil pH and look at acidity or alkalinity issues, whether you have boron toxicity or aluminium toxicity in the soils. Um, whether you have high levels of organic matter or very low levels and where that is sitting in the profile of your soil. And we are interested in soil organic matter because it provides a cation exchange capacity, it influences water holding capacity, it provides our primary source of nutrient cycling in a production system. So it's integral across a lot of different functions in soil. There are additional tests you can do. Be aware of what is happening in the region around you and on the soils around you. So when we think about the biology of the soils, we're largely talking about the role of the bacteria and fungi in the soils, our microorganisms. So the more diverse your biological population is, generally the more effective it is at suppressing things like soil diseases and pathogens that are present in the soil. But we also like to consider the microbial biomass. It's very reflective of how healthy your soils are. So where you have higher levels of organic matter that are produced because you have less constraints in your soil, you support a larger microbial biomass which is more diverse and you're able to do or support functions such as nutrient cycling more effectively. So if you're considering how your soil is structured, you obviously need to consider your soil type and what is the appropriate structure for that particular soil type. Between 10 and 20 centimetres there's often a compaction layer in our more sandier soils. So having a measure of penetration ability is a good thing. So how well your roots are able to penetrate the soils. If there's a compaction layer, quite often your roots can't get past it. And aggregation would be the other key structural um, attribute of soils with more clay in them. So do they form a structure or are they crumbly or are they do they smear? Once that information is back, what you're wanting to do is compare it to target values or benchmark values for your particular production system and for the particular soil type. So for sands, for example, you may have a different target to a heavier clay soil. So it's important to access good information. So uh, accessing things like the soil quality website or your local department of agriculture or your local agronomist. Um, who has experience in the areas of soils will help you 
determine which of the targets is appropriate to address first.